13 Lectures on General History at China by Liu Jun Chapter 2 The Three Dynasties 1. What was the Shah? The Shah derived from the Siaho clan, a tribe in the Shah dynasty. The Shah dynasty was generally thought to have been located at Yuzhou. However, some still argue that it was either situated in the reaches of the river Han, in Sha County, Shaanxi Province, or at a more distant location. According to the records of ancient Chinese history books, the Sha Dynasty, 2100 BC to 1600 BC, was the first dynasty in China and endured for about four or five hundred years. Spanning 17 emperors, from Da Yu or the Yu the Great to Jia, and encompassing 14 generations in total. With its heartland covering the west of Henan province and the south of Shaanxi province, it possessed a large territory bounded on the east by eastern Henan, by Mount Hua in the west, by the Ji River in the north, and the Wai River in the south. There is little authentic extant literature relating to this dynasty. In records of the Grand Historian, Annals of Shah, Sima Qian only recorded a brief history stretching from Da Yu, who was said to have reigned the 2100 BC, and his great feats in flood control to the fall of the dynasty, precipitated by the cruelty and oppression of its last emperor. Jia, 1728 BC to 1675 BC. In spite of his ruthless and fierce nature, Jia once pompously compared himself to the everlasting sun. His empire would not set at the end of the day, like the sun. Nor would it ever set he claimed. Having suffered more than enough of his heavy oppression, the people cast a fatal curse upon him. If only the ruthless sun would set. Damn you to death even at the price of our death. 2. Shang Dynasty A great man named Shang Tang led his troops in rebellion against Jia and eventually the Sha Empire fell. With the death of the tyrant Jia following soon afterwards, the Shang Dynasty, 1600 BC to 1046 BC, consisted of a series 31 emperors belonging to 17 generations and was based in the region around the northeast of Henan, the southwest of Shandong, and southern Hebei. Its territory stretched from the eastern seaboard to Shaanxi in the west and as far north as Hebei and as far south as Hubei. The area it had dominion over was much larger than that of the Sha dynasty. From the reign of Tang, circa 1675 to 1646 BC, the founder of the dynasty, to the period of Pan Zhang, who reigned for around 28 years from circa 1300 BC, the capital was relocated many times. Finally, it was moved to Yin, now Anyang in Henan province, under the imperial edict of Pan Zhang. The society of the Shang dynasty consisted of the aristocracy, the plebeians, and the slaves. As the ruling class of the Shang dynasty, the aristocracy included the king, royalty, bureaucrats, princes, and earls. Shang society was characterized by a developed clan hierarchy. The clans at all levels were both social organizations and political entities with power. The clan was the fruit of blood kinship. As the supreme ruler, the king of the Shang dynasty was the chief of the Shang clan, which was the strongest of all the clans. 
Likewise, all other members of the nobility gained their power through their clans. The aristocracy was generally called the people, which referred to many clan chiefs. The plebeians, another major class of the Shang dynasty, were engaged in productive labor such as agriculture and hunting. They were also involved in war and serving on guard duty, participated in sacrifices, and served the king. According to the Oracle Bone Script, the seal script of the Shang dynasty and other extant writings, slaves, representing the lowest class, accounted for a large proportion of the whole population at that time. They were given numerous names such as slave, serf, but most of them were in fact prisoners. Moreover, those from conquered clans or tribes also constituted a sizable sector of the population. In the Shang dynasty, slaves were deprived of all personal freedoms. Yet, they also served the nobility in cultivation, plowing the land, hunting, penal servitude, and so forth. All of these services were rendered without pay. In wartime, they were compelled to join the army and held lowly military posts. Some male and female slaves performed domestic work in the homes of the aristocracy. The aristocracy had ownership over their labor and often even slaughtered them. Human sacrifice was the most typical form that their ruthless cruelty took. Human sacrifice, as its name describes, means the taking of people's lives as an offering at religious rites. There are many records of human sacrifice among the oracle bone scripts which were unearthed in archaeological ruins dating back to the Shang dynasty. Performing human sacrifice was, nevertheless, exceedingly brutal. In the Shang dynasty, most bronze, with the exception of some that was transformed into tools for production, was used to make sacrificial vessels and weapons. The last emperor of the Shang dynasty, Zhou, known as Di Xin during his lifetime, 1075 to 1046 BC, was confronted with the greatest obstacle, the rebellion of the surrounding tribes. This reached its climax in a major war between the empire and the rebels. The central power was left remarkably weakened despite the fact that it had previously easily suppressed the rebellion of minorities in the southeast. Seizing this golden opportunity, the well-prepared tribe of Zhou annihilated the Shang dynasty. 3. Zhou Dynasty The Zhou was an old tribe that dwelt in central Shaanxi province and in the east of Gansu. The tribe had emerged since Gongliu, also known as Duke Liu, relocated his capital to Bin City, now Zunyi and Bin counties of Shaanxi province. The city stood on the border between the lowest plateau of northern Shaanxi and the central Shaanxi plains. Under the leadership of Gongliu, the Zhou tribesmen built thatched cottages, regulated arable lands, and developed agriculture. The economy improved and attracted people from the surrounding areas. After 300 years of laying the painstaking foundation, Zan Fu took the lead, left, and settled in the Zhou Plains at the foot of Kishan Mountain, now in Kishan and Fufeng counties of Shaanxi province. The new location was endowed with fertile soil and they lived there contentedly and peacefully. The Zhou was unable to rival the Shang in national strength when King Wen of Zhou, 
1099 BC to 1050 BC, succeeded to the throne. In this way, he accepted the title Earl of Western Yin but was later imprisoned at Changli, now Anyang in Henan Province, as is recorded in records of the Grand Historian, Annals of Zhou Dynasty. The Zhou tribesmen had no choice but to bribe the leaders of the Shang Dynasty by offering steeds and beauties in exchange for the release of their beloved king. With his strength increasing, King Wen relocated the capital to Feng City, now on the western side of the river Feng in Chang'an County, Shaanxi Province, and planned to overthrow the Shang Dynasty. Upon the succession of King Wu, Duke of Zhou 1050 to 1046 BC, King of China 1046 to 1043 BC, the capital was relocated once again to Hao City, now on the eastern side of the river Feng. At that time, King Wu continued his preparations for an attack on the Shang Dynasty. In the Western Zhou Dynasty, 1046 BC to 711 BC, which consisted of 12 emperors belonging to 11 generations, with two exceptions. The throne passed from father to son. This dynasty possessed a territory that stretched from the eastern part of Gansu, its western extremity, to the eastern seaboard, its eastern extremity, to Liaoning, its northern extremity, and the Yangtze River, its southern extremity. The Western Zhou Dynasty had the largest territory of any of the three dynasties mentioned thus far. After the establishment of the Western Zhou Empire, members of the Sha and Shang tribes were given the title of Senior. Before that, the Sha and Shang tribes melted together when the Shang overthrew the Sha. As the Zhou toppled the Shang, all the three tribes found themselves in a melting pot. As a result, the modern Chinese nation began to take shape in the later Western Zhou dynasty. The Han, the main nationality of China, can be traced back to the Huaxia nationality. Even though the Han refer to themselves the Chinese nation, the current usage of that name is quite different from its original meaning for over time the nationality came to subsume many more. Ancient ethnic groups. The Xia component in Huaxia refers to the people of the Central Plains. As is documented in explaining and analyzing characters, Shuao and Jiezi, Sha means people of the central land. The central land is pronounced Zhongguo. This was taken to be used as the name for the people from the central plains in the western Zhou dynasty. The people were called Hua in the spring and autumn period. The Hua and Sha combined together after the Han Dynasty. All three tribes showed a remarkable sense of national identity. They each thought of themselves as the progeny of the tribe of the Yellow Emperor because in their hearts they shared the same origin. In the Western Zhou Dynasty, society was still composed of the aristocracy the plebeians, and the slaves, but it was also marked with the trait of hierarchy. The aristocracy of that time consisted of the king, princes, ministers, and others. The king of the Zhou dynasty, also called Son of Heaven, or Son of God, wielded supreme sovereign power on behalf of Heaven or God. Except for the royal domain. All other lands and slaves were given to descendants of the Zhou clan. These lands and slaves were called the private properties of the princes. As we can see, 
the king, the princes, and even ministers of the whole hierarchy were bound by the blood relationship of the clan. Beneath the aristocracy, there existed a class of plebeians known as the freemen. They were called the people of Guo, in reference to the name of the city or town where they resided and its suburbs. These folks had to enlist for military service during wartime and perform acts of labor such as constructing palaces or public works. They could, however, be entitled to participate in state affairs. This group, together with the merchants and handicraftsmen, represented the plebeians of that time and formed an important class and even the majority of civilians. They were also drawn into conflict with the aristocracy which eventually resulted in them staging a revolt during the Western Zhou dynasty. In addition, an untitled populace was also present in the society of the Western Zhou dynasty. They were devoted to agricultural labor, cultivation of public lands, and various forms of servitude. They were certainly unlike slaves because they possessed land and were engaged in agricultural production. The harvests gleaned from their own fields belonged to them. At that time, this class was relatively large. Slaves were situated at the bottom of the society and were given different ranks. They labored in agricultural production, handicrafts, animal husbandry, and so forth. Some slaves also performed domestic work in the houses of the nobility. Endowed with the culture established under the Shang dynasty. The Zhou dynasty initially imitated the Shang before overthrowing it. Notwithstanding, Zhou culture still retained its own features. Academics of this dynasty had open access to the aristocracy forming the pattern of knowledge in government. Only the children of the nobility could receive education in imperial academies. Their syllabus covered poetry or lyrics for sacrificial rites. Books, rites, music, archery, cart driving, and other skills necessary for the nobility. Furthermore, the Western Zhou dynasty had a feudal infectment system whereby blood relationship depended on the marital system. It still retained the conventions of the Shang dynasty. Monogamy for the common people and polygamy for the nobility coexisted, however, with the slight difference that marriage tended to be more standardized with a set of legal or established rights. These ceremonies, which came into being in the Zhou dynasty, were basically passed down through the later long history of China. Nonetheless, the traces of the primitive marriage customs were still clear. Each spring, single men and women were allowed to court and even elope without limitations. In the later feudal society, this was strictly prohibited owing to the impact of ethical code. On the whole, the patriarchal clan system greatly influenced the later historical evolution of China. This system has cast a persistent shadow over the history of China. Four social activities in the Sha, Shang, and Zhou dynasties during the Sha and Shang dynasties. Cities were the political centers and military fortresses for the central imperial state and noble. Defensive facilities such as high city walls, deeply dug moats, and intentionally utilized natural environments were designed for each city. 
The most important buildings within the city were normally palaces for royal and noble families and the temples for worshipping ancestors. Monogamy was the dominant rule for marital custom during the Shah and Shang dynasties. However, polygamy was very common among the noble families. Political matrimonies were an additional feature of noble marriages. During the Shah and Shang periods, imperial families would frequently marry a noble woman from another tribe or would send a royal woman to marry a person from a different clan in order to establish political relationships. Earthenware was widely used in the Shah dynasty, but bronze vessels became more widespread in the Shang dynasty. People in those periods mainly took food with their hands. But these were supplemented with knives, spoons, and chopsticks. The major food in the Shang dynasty included millet, white millet, wheat, and rice. Meat was generally derived from two sources. One was from domestic breeding animals, such as cows, sheep, pigs, dogs, horses, and chickens. Wild animals were counted as the second source. One remarkable feature of the Shang dynasty was the prevalence of the social consumption of alcohol. Alcoholism and negligence of state affairs undeniably contributed to the end of the Shang dynasty. People in the Shah and Shang dynasties highly respected their gods. No matter if the issue was tiny or significant, whether giving birth, burying the deceased, initiating a war, appointing government officials, hunting and farming, marrying a new couple, or worshipping ancestors, all affairs required consultation with the gods before action was taken. Moreover, it was believed that deceased ancestors were able to influence their offspring's fortune. However, the deceased ancestors were just considered as intermediaries between the gods and the human emperors. The structure of the nation in the Western Zhou Dynasty, c. 1046 BC to 771 BC, displayed an unequal liaison between the central imperial state and subsidiary royal states, which was different from the Shah and Shang dynasties. This type of liaison was established on the basis of blood or marriage relations. Hence, the bonds among the central states and the subsidiary royal states were closer and more stable than the relationship among the central and noble states liaisons in the Shang dynasty. Cities remained the political, military, and cultural centers of the central imperial state and the subsidiary royal states in the Zhou dynasty, 1046 BC to 256 BC. Thanks to the close vertical relationships among central and subsidiary royal states as well as the intimate horizontal relations among the subsidiary royal states, the layout of the cities was rather unified, and the hierarchical classification was rather obvious. In the terms of scale, the imperial capital city was larger than the feudal royal ducal cities. And the scale of the feudal ducal cities varied based on their rankings. Palaces and temples were still the most important buildings in the city. Their locations in the city followed one simple rule as a palace must be in the middle of a city. And a temple must be in the middle of a palace. Trade was active in all cities and handicraft workshops were located within each city. 5. 
patriarchal consanguinity and the system of state the earliest states of ancient China developed on the base of primitive society whereby ties of blood and affinity were the essential social relationships. This kind of social construction mostly remained in place after the emergence of political states. Therefore, the earliest states in ancient China, the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties, derived from tribal states whose politics, laws, and system of selecting official were replete with tribal characteristics. The Western Zhou dynasty maintained a typical system of patriarchal consanguinity in which the enfeftment system formed the basic mode of governance. And awarding hereditary titles and salaries formed the basic method of selecting officials. Extant historical resources reveal less information about the Xia dynasty, 2000 BC to 1600 BC, but demonstrate that a mature system of consanguinity had developed in the Shang dynasty, 1600 BC to 1100 BC, and had reached its peak in the Western Zhou dynasty, 1046 BC to 771 BC. The system of consanguinity was a tribal political system by which the social classes were divided. It was founded on the basis of blood relationship and affinity. The political power and clan power were combined into one authority with the nobility forming its executive. The social classes consisted of the great clans and the small clans, the so-called the system of Zhao Mu. The highest governor was called the king. Beneath him, those with political status were divided into seigneurs, lords, and commoners in descending order. The Shang and Zhou dynasties established a system of enfeftment with the purpose of governance. According to the historical records, there were more than 3,000 states at the beginning of the Shang dynasty and more than 1,800 states in the earlier part of the Zhou dynasty. In contrast to modern states, the states in these two dynasties were actually polis in which the governors reigned over the city directly. The king's jurisdiction did not extend very far. The sovereignty for the wider countryside beyond the jurisdiction of the king was held by the seigneurs according to the enfeftment system. For example, the king of Shang enfeft the tribe of Jizhou whose head was called Shi Bo, to govern the Wei Shui River Valley. The seigneurs were supposed to fight for the king and to involve themselves in particular rites such as sacrifices, celebrations, and funerals. The king of Zhou had the power to arbitrate in disputes or conflicts between seigneurs and to punish or launch punitive expeditions. In tandem with enfeftment, the hereditary system was the basic method for selecting officials in the Shang and Zhou dynasties. In contrast with the professional officials in modern society, the governors of the states in the three dynasties came from noble families. For example, in the Zhou dynasty, the title of king was inherited by the monarch's eldest son, a senior peer of the realm. Other sons would be authorized to set up princely, great states, and receive the titles of duke, marquis, earl, vicomte, and baron, respectively. The hereditary system provided a means by which the inheritable positions in government would be held by the nobles, corresponding to their inherited status ranging from the duke down to she.
The legal system of the Shah, Shang, and Zhou consisted of two parts, rights and punishments. The mature rights system came into being during the Three Dynasties, specifically in the Zhou. The rights system provided a very useful standard by which the social classes were ranked and thereby the nobles were protected by the governance of the dynasties. Rights were used to adjust the internal relationships between the nobility, while punishments were used to control the lower working classes, as it was said. Punishments would not be implemented up to the lords. Rights would not be implemented down to the commoners. There were five rights and five punishments in the historical records of the Western Zhou dynasty, far more than in the Xia and Shang dynasties. According to historical records, the five rights includes the right for fading heaven and earth, known collectively as Ji Li, the funerary right, the right for events of international communication, the right for military events, and the right for coronations and royal weddings. The five punishments included the tattooing of the face, the cutting off of the nose, the cutting off of the feet, the cutting off of the genitals, and death by severing the body at the waist. 6. Thoughts and philosophy of this period Shang Dynasty, 17th century BC to the 11th century BC, became established. During this dynasty the primitive religion, which worshipped ancestors and nature, was superseded by one which maintained a belief in God as a supreme being. In the 11th century BC, the Zhou people, local to the Wei River region, deposed the Shang dynasty and founded the Zhou dynasty, 11th century BC to 256 BC. The Zhou people propounded some innovative religious ideas. For instance, the religion of the Western Zhou dynasty, 11th century BC to 771 BC, upheld the separation of the ancestor god from the supreme being. The Zhou people put forward their own moral and ethical thoughts, formulating defined categories of morality and filial piety. The religious thought of the Shang and Zhou dynasties is associated with the embryonic yin-yang and the five elements theory. In essence, Yin and Yang refer to the light and dark phenomena within nature. This Yin and Yang concept developed into the Yin and Yang theory, which includes the idea of the unity of opposites. This can be clearly seen in the original manuscript version of the Book of Changes.